What is a MacGuffin? Someone asked, what is a MacGuffin? He said, well, it's an apparatus for trapping lions in the Scottish Highlands. Man said, but there are no lions in the Scottish Highlands. He said, then that's no MacGuffin. <laughs> uh, thank you for clearing that up for us. That really doesn't explain what a MacGuffin is. <laughs> It's a very simple thing. It's the thing that the main characters are after. In spy movies, you're gonna see one of these. It's what the spies are after, whatever it is. There are three types of MacGuffins, Hitchcock, Lucas, and Abrams. I'll go through them in the order they were made. The simplest form of MacGuffin is the Hitchcockian MacGuffin. He didn't invent it. It's existed long before him, but he invented the term MacGuffin. It's an object, usually. I'll get to the usually part in a second, but it's something that the main characters are after that they want, and the bad guys can be after it too. It's what all the people in the movie want to get. I'll do a couple examples. In Mission Impossible, it's the Nautilus. They knew we were coming, man. They knew we were coming and the disc is gone. Are you intact? The disc is gone. Did you, do you read me? The list is in the open. This is an old one, the Maltese Falcon. What is it? The uh, stuff that dreams are made of. It's just a statue of a bird. In Mission Impossible Fallout, it's the three cores of the nuclear bomb. Plans uh, of an atom bomb, anything you like. North by Northwest. This is kind of a weak MacGuffin because it only comes up near the end, but it's a statue full of microfilm. Why else would you have decided not to tell her that our little treasure here has a belly full of microfilm? You don't even learn what's on the microfilm. That's how you know it's a MacGuffin. It doesn't matter what it is. The thing that the characters on the screen worry about but the audience don't care it could be anything it's interchangeable and then skyfall very similar to first mission impossible it's a list of spies a list of their identities where is it is it there hard drive's gone Are you sure it's gone and that's a very common one because if spies lose their identities they're cooked like they're, they're toast. Toast. You both know what's at stake here. We cannot afford to lose that list. And that one, you can tell it's a MacGuffin because it gets forgotten halfway through the movie. It just serves its point as a MacGuffin. And it's basically just to get you to the bad guy. I'm sorry. Once you're at the bad guy, he takes over the rest of the movie. A lot of people call that a plot hole. It's not a plot hole. It served its purpose. If you care about the MacGuffin, then it's not a MacGuffin. Which, this is a good segue to the second camp of MacGuffins. George Lucas. His first MacGuffin was in Star Wars. Give you a few seconds to guess, and then I'm going to tell you. The MacGuffin in Star Wars is R2-D2. Technically, it's the Death Star plans, but he very intentionally puts it inside a cute little droid, and he makes you care about the MacGuffin. That's the difference. Especially the Indiana Jones movies, he makes you care about the MacGuffin. The Force Awakens, the MacGuffin, will give you a few seconds to guess. Technically it's the map, but it's really Luke Skywalker. They're trying to find Luke Skywalker. Leia and the Resistance want to find Luke Skywalker and also the bad guys, Kylo Ren and Snow. I will finish. What you started. That's probably my favorite MacGuffin, just because it's a beloved character. There are other issues that came from that, and I won't talk about those right now, but just on the MacGuffin level, Luke Skywalker is the MacGuffin. Okay, let me list off some more MacGuffins. Indiana Jones series, The Ark of the Covenant. That may not be a character that you care about, but it is giving this sense of gravitas and power. The Bible speaks of the Ark leveling mountains and laying waste to entire regions army which carries the ark before it is invincible and it has this importance to it it's very vague what it does but it's clearly very powerful the holy grail is a perfect example that one in real life at least religious belief has a sense of power it immediately has that to it, and it really emphasizes that every time it mentions the Holy Grail in that movie. Who drinks the water I shall give him, says the Lord, will have a spring inside him welling up for eternal life. Lucas MacGuffin, perfect example. It's got that sense of importance that you care about what it is. R2-D2 is probably the purest example of a Lucas MacGuffin. It's a character, so you care about it more. But there's 
a third type of MacGuffin, the J.J. Abrams MacGuffin. The only difference about this one is it's also a mystery box. Not all mystery boxes are MacGuffins. In fact, most aren't, but all J.J. Abrams MacGuffins are mystery boxes. The most straightforward example of this is the rabbit's foot in Mission Impossible 3. They create a very vague sense of what it is. It's some powerful weapon. An unstoppable force of, of, of destructive power that would just lay waste to everything, to buildings and parks and streets and children and ice cream parlors, you know? But no, I don't have any idea what it is. I was just speculating. The Abrams MacGuffin is similar to the Lucas MacGuffin in that he gets you to care about it emotionally. There's not really affection like there is for R2-D2, but the main emotion you get is curiosity. And that builds and builds and builds the longer you hold the mystery. By the time it gets to the end of Mission Impossible 3, he kind of takes a page out of the Hitchcock playbook of now the MacGuffin doesn't matter and he throws it away. The rabbit's foot. What is it? Promise me you'll stay, I'll tell you. It's kind of the thing that's at the end of the road that they're trying to get to, and then once they get there, the thing that Hitchcock knew is the momentum is gone, so you throw it out. Even with the Lucas MacGuffin, at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, it just gets put away in a warehouse and gets forgotten. Usually by the end of Hitchcock movies, the third act is going, you're really excited, it's intense and involving, and you've forgotten what the MacGuffin is by then. It's just a vehicle to get you there. That's the simplest description. It's the momentum builder. That's what it does. It's just a plot device to get the story going, to give you momentum and movement towards the end. Oh, give me that lighter. It's fun while you're taking the journey, but once you get there, you realize how empty it is, because it's just a MacGuffin. Plot, and it's just the train that's taking you to the end of the movie. It just gets you there. The stuff that you care about is character. That story. Those are three different kinds of MacGuffins, and you can use them all in different situations, and there's reasons to use them, reasons not to use them for each of them. That's MacGuffins. Why the Indiana Jones ones get thrown away is they're very powerful. Once you get a very powerful object in your story, it gets very hard to write the story. That, that's why the Infinity Stones were thrown away at the beginning of Endgame. Do you know what a MacGuffin is? Yeah, it's a thing you get at McDonald's.